uh, by saying, ironically, spending a lot of time right this week preparing for the draft. Uh, and and I know we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the combine, but fr from a big picture standpoint, right, we were rewarded this year by uh, prolonging the season, which I think uh, all of us, you know, all teams in the NFL would love to have that problem at the end of the day, then you quickly go into your normal, let's call it week of, of checking out, getting your house in order. Then we intentionally, you know, tried to take a little time to renew and then come back this week, right, to begin talking about, right, our, our vision for the offseason in particular, right, free agency, our players, who we want to return. And, and in that, right, this is a very intentional time for us, right, to, to gain clarity uh, on the players that make up our, our draft board. And, and we're very intentional about how we use the combine. We definitely use it. Uh, you know, it, our area scouts are doing something specifically different than maybe uh, some of our, our personnel executives and, and advisors, our analysts and analytics firm will be, will be crunching and synthesizing uh, the numbers, right, that come in a, as the players, uh, right, get measured and, and tested in, in different different drills there. It's just maybe maybe we're not there to see subset player uh, jump or uh, do his broad jump, uh, but we certainly utilize the numbers as they come in. So that's that's what we're doing. We'll open it up for questions. So to you, Kevin. Uh, hi, Les. How's it going, Kevin? Good. How are you? I am. Uh, I'm good. This isn't my real question, but did you go anywhere? I did. I did uh, go somewhere. Was able to to get away, escape. Uh, coincided with our two juniors in high school having, uh, I guess they call it a winter break uh, type deal. So we were able to. It, we were able to get away, and it was a good. It was a good time to truly escape and and maybe do nothing and and and, and get bored again. So, Can you make us envious by saying where you went? You know, I, I, I can say this. It was it was uh, tropical weather. Oh, very nice. <laughs> um, and I, I know we'll have specific questions about players, coaches, et cetera. But in general terms, what changes uh, for an offseason when you've just won a Super Bowl, whether it's practical terms, people terms, whatever? I, I think the. If, if anything changes uh, at all, it would be, and, and let's just, let's keep it with the, the, the simple, hey, are, are we going to run it back? And, and, and I think you could only say that, right, if you, if you're maybe a world champion, because that, that, that kind of takes trying to bring, bring uh, this group, right, the majority of this group back together to see, hey, if we can make another run where maybe in, a, in another offseason, you fail short and, and you're looking at, okay, is there, is there something that you need to, to add uh, to maybe get closer? Now, with that being said, I, I still think, and I think we've said it many a times, right? It, even if you are the world champion, it doesn't mean you're perfect and not close to perfect. So you still have to take the, the similar approach to, right? Hey, is there, is there a tweak in the model that, that helps us actually be better next year than we were this year? Not necessarily in record and things like that, but maybe in 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 how you're uh, accomplishing things and and all of those things that go into maybe you're losing players at these positions and are you you know you're getting thin there and and you need to restock younger players via the draft at certain positions. So it, that stays the same. Uh, Les, will you allow me one more question? Uh, yes, we will. I don't know now. Artists may get mad at me. Well, that's why I asked you. <laughs> Um, I mean, artists, this, that's unfair. Hey, too. Hey, if, listen, I say no, you, Kevin. if I say I, no, then Kevin's mad at me, you know, what I mean? <laughs> and then, but Jordan may be getting mad at me or well, Sue. I see them with their hands raised. It's the only reason I brought those two up. Well, somebody would ask, somebody would ask a question like this if I don't. So, um, what conversations have you had with Sean and what's your sense of where he is now in terms of his commitment to coaching next season? Oh, I, I think he's – we've had a lot of conversations. I think he's jacked uh, uh, to be coming back and coaching the Rams. I, I think at the end of the day, right, it's a compliment to him, right, the success that he has. Maybe the, the combination of, of personality, uh, hey, mom, dad, you know, genetically gave him maybe a TV face and things like that that, 
that that some of those uh, you know let's call it I guess we call them organizations networks or whatever thought that that you know that he would be good at doing that so that's just a compliment uh, that's part of the business uh, and but I know this and talking with Sean he's he's jacked to to be a ram and, and to to finish what we've started over the last five years. Or Hi from Indianapolis, Les. How you doing? I uh, I'm good. Is it tropical weather there? It's beautiful weather here. Actually, it's like uh, 60 degrees right now. It's balmy. You know what? I I probably do miss the the good the good doing the run there along the river. <laughs> uh, that's kind of a, a indie tradition. So. That would definitely be good running weather versus holy can. Uh, I forgot to bring gloves and my hands are freezing. <laughs> and, you know. Absolutely. Hey, Les, I wanted to check in on uh, as you guys start to open up uh, preparation for this free agency process. I know you're on the draft right now, but as a staff, um, have you guys started contract discussions for an extension with Matthew Stafford? Is that still a priority for you guys? And then uh, in terms of this checklist that takes you through free agency, um, who are a couple of people that sort of need to happen first before the rest of this can sort of fall into place? Yeah, we're, there's definitely going to be an intentional plan. Matthew's a part of that, right, to, to make it all work because based on redoing contracts or things like that may give you uh, more cap space. Cap space. But, but probably the, 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 the plan, the blueprint that's on paper now, right, is, is certainly uh, tackle the players whose contracts are going to expire. Because that's that's what we know is coming down the pipe, and and th that would be the most urgent. But there will be some things going on simultaneously because, like we mentioned, you could redo some players and and right uh, reward those players, what have you, but also recoup cap space, and so it becomes a a very agile situation uh, that that Tony will have to handle. But th this is the the time of year where you begin those discussions. I was talking to a, a few agents last night who were in Indy. And, and they made the joke uh, that maybe the Rams have it right by not being there. And it's not necessarily true that we're not there. We have a presence there and people are being intentional. But a lot of times at the Combine, myself, Tony, uh, it, even Kevin at times, right, would, would meet with agents. But it, it's still an element of, I, I call it, not, not necessarily stare down, but it's really, hey, yes, we'd like, we like so-and-so back and the agent may say, yes, so-and-so would love to be back, but no one's really, really talking uh, numbers yet. So uh, that's, that's, that's still to come. So we're in the planning, but we do know this, that it'll, it'll happen fast, and we definitely want to be proactive and, and move fast. And that's a little bit why Sean and I stayed back this week. We had, you know, we, we, we've sat together this week and, and put together an action plan and feel like we can, right, execute it from here, maybe more efficiently than in Indy. And then quick, a uh, quick follow up on your your combine process. Since you guys have sort of changed your methodology and moved toward this since 2019, probably, um, you know, making certain decisions as it pertains to being here in person or, or maximizing that process in your, in your mind as it correlates to your build. Um, what proof have you found over the years that this is the direction for you guys as it correlates to who you are and and how you're built? You know. Uh... That is, that is good. So you definitely need time to to truly come up. Our our, our statisticians would say, right, to, to get enough data. So okay, you prove this is the the right way of doing it, right? So, but some tangible examples will be, uh, especially like for myself, even even coaches, right? It, you you spend time this year, uh, this time of year, gaining clarity on, on football players, and and some uh, probably the the least there's a lot to do this time of year, right? The juggling of the free agency, as you mentioned. So being able to really watch these players play football, uh, that, that's, that's probably the, the hardest uh, chunk of time to carve out because that does take time, right? It, it, when you watch a player play a game or, or different cutups, that, that takes time. You can't, there's no clip notes to that. Now, with that being said, you, you can then blend what you've seen on film with maybe right, what players do in drills that aren't playing football and, and, and we have our, our algorithms and, and formula that, that we do have some data that says, hey, when you blend that, doesn't mean we had to be there to see it, but 
you know, if a player scores here in some of those drills and, and has this type of subjective football grade, you know, their, their, you know, their, their success rate is higher than if you score a little bit lower in this drill or what have you. So it's, it's still a sliding skill, but, and, and there's times, right, where you can certainly remember where uh, maybe you sat down with a player for 15 minutes, that player was extremely tired, might've been his, you know, last interview at night uh, from 1045 PM to 11 PM, maybe he was uh, just, just flat out worn out. Uh, and maybe from a personality standpoint, seemed dull. And at that point you have this bias that, right from that moment that maybe the players maybe not a not a fit so you can always go geez that will look how much success that players have it now and we just happen to catch a bad moment in 15 minutes so you so as a general manager we're always trying to come up with ways to engineer processes to right eliminate those type biases that sometimes happen like when you i call it really squeeze a lot in into a place like me thanks les so Hey, Les, as, that, as your guys' approach to the combine has evolved, what, besides maybe the medical piece, is, has become uh, the, most imparted, the most important part of this uh, event? Like you said, you guys have a presence here, so obviously you're still using it and utilizing it, but what becomes the most important part well, of, of that I process? Think, I, don't, I don't know if I would I – wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't probably rank importance, right? Me, the, the medical's uh, extremely uh, important uh, – in that, but we, we also blend the medical with maybe someone's, uh, I call it, has a football knee, right? A little bit of wear and tear there uh, that the medical might flag. Well, maybe the players never missed a game. So you, you still have to weigh that you, you, it's not just, you're not looking at medical in a silo, right? You're, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to blend it with, with other information. The, yes, what, what you run a short shuttle in, right, could, could definitely, uh, you know, I call it whether it's good or bad or, or you can you can rank those and, and there might be at different positions a, a good short shuttle may lead to a, a better ch you know chance of success. Uh, again, it's just a it's just a percentage. It's just helping you uh, maybe be more certain on definitely something that's uh, you know not certain. Uh, I, I think the psychological testing there. Uh, has been and really good because we, we we do a lot of vetting whether it's uh, you know where they grew up and and their hometowns where they played high school football where they played college football so you, you and then you blend some of that with let's call it more independent testing and and, and it's all coming up with your own I think each team probably has different algorithm algorithms of how they they blend that information right and hey you go to the combine and you you connect and 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 meet with different agents and, and things like that so there's there's many parts and facets of it that, that's very helpful, very beneficial. And we're, we try to each year look at it and be intentional how we use that information and be efficient in how we get it. Thank you. Hey, Les, good morning. First of all, uh, I want to say congratulations on winning the Super Bowl. Um, Thank you very much, Claudia. Appreciate that. Um, you actually talk a little bit about that. Uh, that cap space, obviously you will have some cap space. How much does that flexibility play into your draft picks and free agency selection? Are there, have, I mean, I think with, I think, so in that, obviously the, the, the cap is here, right? To probably engineer as competitive a, a league as possible. Obviously there's, there's flexibility in that, but, but speaking of, of the draft, right? I, I, think, I think what it allows us to do is and I, I know our analysts had, had given some data that I think when we open this year, 66% of our, our roster was drafted, which is most in the league or tied for most in the league. And 55% and of our roster was drafted or college free agents from 2018, which was most in the league. Now, why do I bring up 2018? Well, what that allows you to do is right, have players that are contributing uh, in different roles and, and like we've seen even had to start at different times during this year uh, and they're on they're still on their rookie contracts which does then allow you to maybe let's call it reward a Aaron Donald who's one of the best in the world in, in his contract so there's that balance of how you use cap space and, and, and draft picks and, and 
uh, the way that the system works, right? Uh, as draft picks uh, develop and earn their equity, right? They're they're on a they're you know they're getting paid a lower wage, and then as they right earn their uh, equity and 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 show how they're going to contribute and be impactful, then at that point their their salaries change and and usually uh, are rewarded with raises. And last one for me, uh, I know you're still obviously looking um, what could possibly, you know, change is that what positions would you like to strand and make more deeper, you feel like? Well, I, I think what, 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 we, what we like to do, because it, it's, it's a tough, we, we got a very competitive team right now. So a lot of times rookies, you're not necessarily relying on them to come right in and, and start. So there's an element, uh, some do, some don't, some right exceed expectations some some do not it's a little slower process whatever those things are, are to be determined uh but i i think what we what we try to do probably is look at okay is is there is there a position where maybe we're going to lose some players in free agent maybe we sign one back lose two do we do we need to add younger players to make sure that we have depth there we have younger depth there depth that we can develop and 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 then rely on them to contribute or, or even start so uh and then there's just the the common sense approach of right you sit back and wow wherever we pick first maybe a player at a position that know? you don't necessarily have to have and it could be one of your stronger positions but there's a player there's an individual there that we really appreciate and would love to own board as a Ram and, and you end up, uh, I don't want to call it unbalanced, but it's always really good to be, be strong at position. So uh, you, you, sometimes you don't want to be too measured because you might miss out on individuals, right? That, that, hey, good, good football players end up, right? Helping you build a good football team. Thank you, Les. Have a good day. Hey, Les, it, how does your process sort of work as far as looking at, existing players and saying, okay, we, we want to sit down and talk to them. Have you done that yet? The, the Von Millers, the OBJs, when does that sort of take place? You know what? It, it, it takes place. Uh, it's probably ongoing after the season. So, and, and I know then it becomes a little more in, intentional and structured. Uh, again, as, as, as Sean, myself, Tony got back from that renewal period, I called it and tried to clear our heads it's starting at the beginning of this week we begin you know putting a blueprint together at that point you know sean will definitely reach out to the to the player and, and often tony and i will will reach out to the agents and, and begin the the dance of trying to, to come up with a win-win a uh right a win-win situation for for both player and 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 club in our efforts right to bring uh right to bring as many uh of this year's players back as possible uh, right, because they 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 achieved uh, something special, and they, and they all have a, a passion to write a try to you know make a run to 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 achieve uh, more special things. Thank you. Hey Ryan, we'll get some of these local guys. We'll double back to you. So uh, Gary, um, wanted to ask you it's to save time and. Uh, of these artists in terms of not asking multiple questions one after another, I'm gonna ask you several questions now. So um, I, first of all, are you guys gonna redo Aaron Donald's contract? Um, what is the situation with Andrew Whitworth? And, how, and are you concerned with uh, so many pending free agents on the offensive line? And finally, how does uh, Odell's knee injury impact your ability to re-sign him and or you know, wanna retain him? I, I think uh, uh, again, I, we're, we're in discussions with with Aaron, and and I know that his contract right uh, is something that we'll discuss, and, and and time will determine, you know, how that works out. Andrew again is, you know, he's still going through. <clears throat> we've chatted with Andrew. So we, we we've got a a pretty good feel of the direction he he wants to uh, move, but uh, not official yet. Yes, anytime, uh, anytime you. You, you let's call it you lose starters I, I always go get it sometimes I, I hate to use the word concerns uh but we call it priorities because you know it, it, if losing players concerns you it, that just seems a little negative like wow that's 
that's just football, that's sports. So it, there's an element, yes, you prioritize some of those positions by going, okay, if Andrew retires, like who, in, who internally can move in and, and, and take his place? Uh, who outwardly could, is there some, is there players in the draft? So you start putting the, the, that puzzle together. I think anytime it's unfortunate Odell, you know, had, a, had an injury. So really what that does for us is yes, we, we definitely like to have Odell be a part. Now you just know that, uh, right. He, he might miss uh, the first half of, of the season or something like that. And, and so the negative of that is, is that's, that's just a tough, unlucky break. The positive is that you may get someone uh, with very fresh legs, right. Uh, for the stretch run, similar to, to maybe uh, how we did it this year. So all of those, each time, uh, right. Each of those variables, right. Leads to some, some type of uh, reaction or consequence that you definitely have to uh, intentionally try to uh, make the most of. Thank you. Nick. Hey, Les, uh, again, congratulations on winning the Super Bowl. Thank you. Uh, when you look at, obviously, you talk about the draft picks, you talk about free agency, um, but looking at uh, a guy like, you know, Jacob Harris, who unfortunately got injured last year, but the potential that you saw in him, um, is that something that you guys kind of look forward to, forward to as far as just... Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So just, it's, it's a guy like Jacob Harris, obviously he got injured, um, but he had a lot of potential. Is that something that you're looking forward to as far as when you're going into the, the, the draft process, as far as looking at these guys' injury history or potential injury history um, moving forward? Well, the, I think you, we definitely like to look at injury history for sure. Uh, again, some of those, some, some of those are, are patterns. Some are, right, let's call it unlucky unlucky breaks in, in a contact sport or, or a movement sport, right? Where, I mean, there, there's non-contact, there's just in, in joints involved. So you, you definitely try to do that. You definitely try to predict that. In, in the case of someone like Jacob Harris, a lot of times in draft meetings, we may start, right, uh, with with maybe watching some film of, of Jacob Harris from, from last year, right? As, as a reminder that, oh, by the way, we have this player on our roster. Uh, sometimes we call them bonus babies in terms of, I, I think of one of our unrestricted Sebastian Joseph day, right? There was, he kind of, he wasn't, he, he wasn't active at all, right? His, his first year. And then, and then at the end of the day, you kind of forget about him maybe, uh, but you put some film back on and remind, Hey, we do, we do have this player. So does that affect uh, how your, your draft strategy? Like, Oh, let's don't do a defensive lineman now because we, we really like uh, Sebastian and, and maybe, you know, what his growth potential is, things like that. So that's what, that's what we try to do with, with those type players because players that went on IR, he's like, wow. Or some players that were redshirted, right? I mean, I, I, I can't think of anyone, the, the best example possible, right, would be Bryson Hopkins who, who had five catches in the Super Bowl and, that's probably more. He had probably had more catches in the Super Bowl than he's been active since he's been drafted. But at the end of the day, right? Uh, I'm sure there was moments. I'm sure he, if he was honest, he was probably frustrated that he wasn't playing. Uh, but our coaches persevered. He persevered. Uh, they developed him, and uh, when when he was called upon and needed the most, right? He was ready. And that's the hardest thing that young players have to do. And this is very stressful. Uh, you know, it's anxiety ridden because you're always like, what? Well, man, I didn't get a uniform today. So you go through those emotions, those players. That's why I respect these human beings immensely. Because right when Bryson Hopkins showed up for work and he knew he probably wasn't going to be active, right? How do you dig deep, right, to say, you know what? When I show up for work, I'm going to be really, really good today. And, and I think leading up to, to that Super Bowl, we probably played Card Zach Ertz. We played Gronk. We played Kittle. So you know, he was scout team tight end for, for those teams and, and was really, really sharp in those moments. So I do think all of a sudden when he is active and all of a sudden when, when the, you know, Tyler wasn't able to play and he was called upon, there's an element of confidence to, to throw him the ball a few times. And really quick, uh, when you talk about just, uh, you know, cap space and you guys have had tremendous success with just the cap and being able to make moves and maneuver in that particular way, uh, how high is the priority as far as discussions on possibly restructuring 
certain other contracts beyond the ones that you name to try to get some more flexibility under the cap so you guys can make those moves it, it, you know it is interesting because we we have a we have a you know there's not a lot of restructuring like i mean we we have some highly played players and there's a few right that we could maybe renegotiate redo uh but there if you look at our team just there's there's a lot of players that probably couldn't necessarily be restructured to to help us and, and that's why that's why we have to definitely rely right on our uh, ironically based on everything that's been said this year right the draft the draft is very very important to us uh it, you know, yes we have utilized our first round picks it's not like we're giving them away we're actually bringing in players with those picks but you know it's why we intentionally try to accumulate as many picks as possible and i think probably since 2017 we're probably fifth in the league right and we got we're probably 32nd in the lead in in first round picks we're probably i think second in the league in second and third round picks and maybe fourth in the league uh let's call it with four through seven picks so we definitely uh use the draft because that when you when you don't necessarily have players you can just go right uh open them up and give them a signing bonus uh and create cap room and push it down the future. It, it just it limits you a little bit. Thanks, Les. Dennis. Hello, Les. Congratulations on winning the Super Bowl. Thank you, Dennis. Um, as Super Bowl champions, what do you what do you what exactly do you look for or when you do a combine as far as players' expectations? Is it just talent? Is it just depth? Uh, can you just uh, Elaborate on that. Well, I, you know what I think. I think when you when you go to the combine, right, you're, you're really you're you're trying to you're going to collect data, analyze that data on right players who are going to be let's call it realistic draft picks for us. And with us not having first and second, third, it's different. But you know, you let's just say if we did, if we just had second, you, you're going to always go okay. You you focus on some of those players, second, and third rounders. Yes. Are they, could they come in and start? Or is there a hole where you would like, or we would like to add a starter via the draft? And then at that point in time, you really got to see if the, you can't just go in the draft and say, we're going to draft a starter, because what if you get to where you pick and the best players or the players you actually thought could start at those positions are now gone. Now do you just pick the next best guy and, and force that player into being, sorry, that's probably how you make a mistake. But also at the combine, there's going to be players there that we actually probably sign as college free agents. And at that point in time, you're not necessarily, you know, bringing them those guys in the start, but somewhere along the way in the process, whether it's fall film, all-star games combine, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to uh, let's call it showcase some type of skill that we think can help and, and come contribute uh, in, in some type of role. So that's, that's how we use the combine because there's so many players there. You can't just say, oh, we're going to focus on, on the next starter. Thank you, Les. Appreciate it. Ryan. Ryan. Hey, last Ryan. Ryan. Hey, you finally get to see you smile. I think you, you, took, you, <laughs> you were offended when we when uh, artists chose L.A. over New York. No, I totally understand. Totally understand. If, I, if this was a giant Zoom and somebody from L.A. was zooming in, I would have been frustrated, too. So, <laughs> Well, you uh, probably would have unmuted and, and ripped somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I might have done that once or twice along the way somewhere. Thanks for taking my question. Appreciate it. I just wanted to go back to Sean and just the idea that successful teams like yours can now have this, like, well, it feels like a tipping point where broadcast networks can try to post, poach your coach or poach a GM with the money that they're able to pay. Does that feel like a tip? Like that never happened before. Your coach was under contract. Your GM was under contract. You never had to worry about them going anywhere. Does that feel like that could become like a tipping point? And, uh, you know, you got to pay maybe drive salaries up a little in this profession even more to, to avoid, the, you know, somebody going to Fox or NBC or Amazon or whatnot. I think that's, I think if we had a, I'm definitely not an economics expert and probably would have, you know, didn't do so well in that class. But if we had an economics expert on the call, he'd probably say that is, that is, that is uh, market forces, right? Organic bottom up market forces that are at play that, that, hey, guess what? You now you have to deal with and react to. So, and I think it's, that's, 
you know what, based on everything that's going on right on the planet, that would, if you ever want to make a case for, uh, right, th this country is not perfect, right, but what it does allow people to do is you, there's some, you know, some semblance of trying to control your de des destiny or, or earn a way, and doesn't mean Amazon's going to knock on your door or Fox, but maybe, you know, a network in in Miami, Florida does, and, and, and you get to make a good living doing something that you're, you're passionate about. But I, I think to answer your question it, that, yes, it's like a lot of things in sports, uh, right? This isn't necessarily the conventional traditional way, right? You had maybe John Madden and he was the broadcaster, right? Forever. And, and then, but, but nowadays, uh, you know, you're, you're seeing, uh, right. Uh, networks knock on doors uh to try to get you they're trying to be good too right and that's that's the that's called that's a good thing about this country right every you know everyone's trying to be good and they're trying to find good people to help them be good thank you Les. tyler hi les congratulations again on the super bowl title thank you tyler um Going back to Aaron Donald, have you had any uh, conversations with him in the past few days about his contract and his future? And if so, can you kind of fill us in on the nature of those talks? You know, Ed, you, I'm going off track because I see you got that horse picture in the background there. So uh, where I was at in the tropics, Kevin, I never my, my daughter likes riding horses and I got on a horse for the second time. So we've had fun as a family telling stories of myself riding Victor. And, and there, was a, there, was, there was this moment, Tyler, where Victor, now again, this is my second time riding a horse. I've been scared to death. Now I've, I've watched Yellowstone now, so now I know that I'm supposed to act calm up there. But Victor got something stuck in his tail and he didn't like that. And so we went through everything you're supposed to do, like the horse goes too fast, because we're on this beginner trail. This horse is trotting. Well, they didn't tell me what to do when Victor got up on his back two legs. So that wasn't in the manual. So, you know, I just knew, hey, hey, Vic, calm down. And our Abigail was our wrangler. But I was telling the story that and I don't know how we got to this, but I'm like, hey, Victor, I don't know why Abigail is taking so long to get back here. You know what? If it was between you and I, she'd get back here faster. But she says she's going to come back and get this thing off your tail. If you can just hang here on these all fours and not get up on those back two again, I think we're all going to be better. So uh, <laughs> that's the horror story. So, yes, uh, I know Sean was going to chat with Aaron today uh, uh, and, and, and revisit with him. I hadn't been able to, to connect with, with Sean, but I, I do know this. It, it, there had to be some, a good conversation or probably Sean would have, would have called and there would have been a, a crisis going on, right? Uh, if there was something other than that. But yeah, I think this is the time of year, right, where we're going to sit down with those guys. And, and I do know this, there has been, there's a, the cool thing, right, with someone like Aaron Donald, I mean, I, I think back when he was a rookie, right, you come in as a rookie and you're like, okay, I hope I can play in the NFL. And, and then there's that stage where, holy cow, I can play in the NFL. I, I really want to be the best in the NFL. And then, then that works out. And then there's that moment where, Wow, we've seen how happy Aaron was, right, to accomplish something with his teammates, right? It wasn't, it wasn't another defensive MVP, another sack title, what, what, all the accolades that that he's earned. But I think what's neat is to to see some of those players like Aaron, who, right, got skin on the wall, a lot of individual accolades, but really, really appreciate. Uh, what it feels like to do something special with other people. So uh, that's the, that's the, I think that's the bonus about actually getting to the Super Bowl and, and, and checking the box and, and winning uh, the gold medal instead of, you know, coming up short and, and sitting on the podium with the silver medal. We'll have to have a conversation later about your horse riding experiences too. <laughs> oh, it, it's, I, it, that, it was, it, I call them trotting. No, it wasn't even trotting. It was walking. Trotting would be, hey, are you okay if we trot right now? You know, so, you know, that. But you definitely get to know your horse. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Victor. I mean, I understand he had a little something in that tail, didn't like it. But you know what? He was uh, older, wiser, mature, handled it with poise. You know, I mean, it, it was, you know what? And, and at the end of the day, scored on the last drive to win it. So give Victor some credit. Well, uh, we'll have time to wrap over to you, Kevin, and one for you, Jordan. 
Um, well, just to circle back on on uh, Aaron Donald, Victor, more. Well, Victor too. I, that might be the ghost of Hollywood Park Racetrack getting back at the Rams a little bit. But uh, man, Kevin, you always have to go there. I don't mean, <laughs> you know, if I don't. Let me tell you this: If there would have been a ghost of the Hollywood track there, uh, I bet you I would have been off the horse. <laughs> Victor wouldn't have waited for Abigail to help out. <laughs> that is true. Um, Aaron Donald, are you are you sure that he's playing for the Rams next season, or are there conditions being placed on I, that? I can say this: I, I don't. I don't want to. A lot of our intimate conversation, so I I can't say that I I'm sure I'd love for Aaron to to be able to say yes. I'm. You know, I'm coming back, or and I'm not even sure he has to, right? Because it's not like he's announced his his retirement per se. That was just rumblings. But I, I do know enough in, in chatting with Sean, who's chatted with Aaron, and chatting with Aaron, right? That last week, you know, post parade things like that. That you know, there was an intent for him to to enjoy the moment, take a break, uh, but also an intent to go. Hey, you know what? If 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 we want to try to do this again and, 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 and do something special with this group of men that we have and, and women in the organization, let's, let's do it. So I, I know there's a sentiment there. So uh, I never say anything with certainty, but uh, it's, I'm not, that's not a concern right now for us. Okay. Thank you. And, hey, definitely Kevin, the day uh, Aaron Donald does decide that he doesn't want to play football anymore and what have you. We can sit up here and talk about it, but I can answer the question now. There's no one in the draft. We're going to be able to draft to replace Aaron. Yes, he, Gary, concern, yes. We're not replacing Aaron Donald. There's, there's only one of those on the planet. We were fortunate enough to, to, to partner with him, and when that void's gone, there's, there's, there's no more Aaron Donalds. Doesn't mean you, you got to pack up your bags and forfeit every game and things like that, but it does mean you, you probably got to change the way you do some things. Jordan. Hey, Les, thanks for the, the late follow-up here. Um, so just wanted to check on a couple of the other guys, too, who will be part of your or maybe not part of your free agency structure, also understanding the comp picks and how they relate to the build. Um, Darius Williams, Austin Corbett, Sebastian Joseph Day, Brandon Powell, Brian Allen, um, Sony Michelle. What, where are those guys at in terms of the want to retain versus the ability to retain? <laughs> You know, I'm not going to answer that, Jordan. At the end of the day, right, Sean, myself, our staff, we definitely have to prioritize that group. I mean, that we'll, we'll, we'll keep that, that priority uh, in-house. And it doesn't mean that if you're, you know, down the list of that group uh, that you're not necessarily wanted. But it, there is some rationale or reason that comes into it go, that goes, okay, maybe this player is going to probably uh, garner more money on the market then we're willing to pay or able to play based on, again, some intentional decisions that we make. You can't just blame it on, on the, the, the market. So, uh, and, and then in a lot of these cases too, it, it gets back to uh, maybe you, maybe I shouldn't say, maybe we determine that one of the players, uh, maybe we might not be able to afford that player, but all of a sudden the market uh, not quite as lucrative as, as they felt and would like to come back, things like that. That's why you gotta have agility in, in these situations. But what, what we will try to do intentionally will be with, with some of the players that are, are on the top of that list. If, if, we, if you can lock them in, right, and that, that helps you know, okay, what, what wriggle room do you have moving forward and, and things like that. But it, it's always a very, very uh, agile situation because it, it's getting harder uh, in today's NFL, right, to, to maybe get something done before, before the bell rings. It, it, it just seems like it's a little bit harder. And I, I can understand right, to come up with that win-win solution because at the end of the day, the players got into free agency uh, and some are different than others, right? Maybe the second or third time they're in free agency, but the first time, right, you, you definitely not quite sure what you're leaving on the table. So uh, there's, there's times when it's very healthy to let the bell ring and then the player gets to really, because everything we're talking about now is speculation, right? Uh, but uh, when the bell rings and someone's truly offering you a contract, now there's a, an element of, wow, that's a lot more than the Rams were offering me. You know what? I, I only live once best for my family to move on. Or there's times where it goes, well, didn't necessarily love the Rams offer, understand why they did it. And, and maybe the market showed that, you know what? The Rams are 
pretty reasonable and fair after all, things like that. So it's, it's interesting. So that's why you have to be, you know, very agile in these situations. 